In this video, you're going to see the 800 days of Arabic progress of one of the students at the AndersInstitute.com, and you will see how he went from this to this. The difference in between the two previous videos is that in one, he didn't know Arabic. In the next one, he knows Arabic. For context, Brother Muzammil, he's from Boston in the United States. He has never traveled to an Arab country to learn the Arabic language, and even so, he was able to learn the Arabic language. Language. So I will show you guys the clips of 800 days ago when he first joined Andalus Institute, where he was at and what was his level and his level of confidence when speaking the Arabic language. And then I will show you where he is at right now. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to test him live. He doesn't know about this test. I'm going to test his understanding live by playing a video of a scholar speaking in Arabic. And he is going to tell us what the scholar said. So let's get into it. Al <laughs> Um, I'm be listening for this one. Inshallah. No. Would you would you ask me? No. Al al sual al awal. I'm I'm listening for this for this um for this one. Oh. Uh, yeah. In the previous video, we are in a weekly conversational session and the student only have access once he has completed six lessons, meaning that before he gets into there, he has already a little bit of vocabulary to defend himself. However, it's the first time that he enters a place where he actually have to put that vocabulary into use. So here, Muzammili was one of the first few times that he entered this weekly conversational session. So as you can hear, he was very uncomfortable. He, you know, the atmosphere was a little bit awkward. He doesn't understand what's going on. I'm telling him, yeah, go ahead. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, I'm just listening. I'm, I don't want to participate. Hey, I'm, I'm listening for this, for this, um, for this one. Now let's see where he was at after he completed a few lessons and let's come back and comment on it. You know, uh, to touch the black stone. I'm a shade to Kaaba. I was able to touch it after that. No, um, I had to You don't know how to say that. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't know. I forgot. What he meant to say in the previous sentence is Allah and I asked Allah and you said for him to help me. Now here we can see he's getting close to fluency. Now in Andalus Institute, we have a philosophy, which is the three stages before fluency. The first stage is where you literally don't know how to say anything in Arabic other than scattered words, you know, kitab, bait, this, that is all scattered. You don't know how to connect them. You don't know how to form sentences. The second stage is when you are able to form sentences like caveman speech, where you say me, one, go, house, very tired, talk tomorrow to you. You understand what I'm trying to say, but it's very bad. The second stage as well is where when you don't know how to say something, you use your backup, you use your original language and you add from that language to complete the blanks that you don't know how to say in Arabic. That's the second stage. So here is at his second stage. Now let's look at his third stage towards Arabic fluency, which is when he is able to speak only in Arabic. Arabic. He's able to communicate, to express feelings, to say what he has in mind and still make a few mistakes here and there just as I am making mistakes while recording this video in English that I'm pretty sure you guys caught on. However, I am able to communicate. I'm able to bring the cross, uh, the point across. Let's look at. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ismi Muzamil wa ana fi Mahla Andalus. قبل بدأت هذا المغمج فكرت لنفسي هذه لغة مستحيلة للناس لكن بعد الفوات الوقت وبعد دراستي لقد وقعت في حب اللغة العربية فالحمد لله الآن عندما أفتح الكتاب أفهم ماذا قرأت وعندما أستمع إلى تسجيلات أفهم ماذا يقال ليس مئة بمئة لكن أفهم بما فيه الكفاية والله العظيم يعني قبل سنة لا أستطيع أن أقول جملة واحدة لكن الآن الحمد لله فيعني إذا لا تستطيعون بالسفر أنصحك بتقديم لهذا البرمج السلام عليكم ورحمة الله
ما شاء الله ما شاء الله اللهم بارك اللهم بارك make sure you guys say اللهم بارك so the last step now is testing Muzammil's understanding of the Arabic language so I'm about to jump on a Zoom call with him however before we get into that I just wanted to mention that if you guys are interested in learning the Arabic language through the same method that Muzammil has used Go ahead and click the link down below. And as well, I take advantage of this particular moment to tell you guys that YouTube is telling me that 83% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. I just want to see that there is people out there who are actually interested in these videos related to the Fusha Arabic. So I keep making them. So go ahead, click subscribe if you are interested in learning the Arabic language. Click the bottom down below. Let's jump on this Zoom call with Muzammil and test him. Where I actually have to test you. Ah, oh, okay. And I have to test your understanding and, and, and everything. What I want to do is I want to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. This video actually has subtitles, but I'm going to hide them so you cannot see them. And basically what I want you to give me is not a tarjam al harfiya, not like the literal oh, word by word, uh, you know, translation, but interpretation of what the sheikh is doing uh, no. or saying, sorry. So, um, no. No, so let's get into it and uh you tell me if you if you if you hear just for the record guys what you see now the screen that you see right now is what muzammil was seeing at the time of the call but once i press play i am editing right now i will put the video of the sheikh with the actual subtitle so you guys can compare in between what muzammil is interpreting from what he hears from the sheikh and what the actual subtitles say so just for the record, he doesn't see the subtitles, only you guys can see it. You heard that? Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, they can. Okay, so what, what did he say here? He said that he wants to give a, a, um, a uh, advice that we're in need of. Okay. وهي ضرورة الرسوخ يا طالب العلم يا أيها الداعية إلى الله ضرورة الرسوخ في علم اللغة العربية وهي زي هي؟ He said it's a need or sort of knowledge to be firm in a language Okay لا بد من الرسوخ في علم اللغة العربية إن كنت ترجو وتطلب وترون أن تكون من المبرزين في علوم الشريعة فإن الركيزة المهمة في ذلك أن تكون متمكنا في علوم اللغة العربية وهي زي The people who study fiqh if you want to be among people who understand fiqh or not you have to be firm in the Arabic language نعم يعني إذا تريد أن تكون مبرز المبرز أو يعني هو يعني فوق العادة إذا أردت أن تكون فوق العادة فلا بد أن تكون متمكنا في اللغة العربية يعني فوق العادة بالنسبة لعلم الشريعة Above average in knowledge be above and beyond in the الشريعة تمام ومهما تأملت في سير العلماء الراسخين فإنك لا يمكن أن تجد عالما راسخا إلا وهو متمكن في لغة العرب what is it here? Can you play it? Like, I didn't, hear, I didn't hear two of the words he said. He said, لا يمكن أن تجد عالما راسخا في يعني في الماضي إلا وكان متمكنا وقويا في اللغة. Ah, uh, you cannot be someone who is firm and strong in the religion if you are not acquainted, you know, you're not strong and firm in the Arabic language. نعم يعني قال أنه لا يمكن أن تجد في سير العلماء من كان عالما غير متبكين في اللغة ليس ممكن يعني. You wouldn't find a person in the Bible in 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 life someone who was strong in the religion and he who was strong in Arabic language as well. نعم. القرآن والسنة نزل وجاء بلغة عربية فصيحة. The Quran and the Sunnah came with the Fasiha, the pure Arabic language. Mm -hmm. And obviously, and it's a must that you, for you to understand the religion. Did he finish sentence yet? 
فينيش لي؟ قال قال لا يمكن ان تفهم كما ينبغي الشريعه قال لا لا يمكن ان تفهم نعم الشريعه كما ينبغي بغير اللغه العربيه Yes, so you cannot understand the religion without the Arabic language. No. كما ينبغي. ينبغي as is as it should. No. مهما استطعت أن تتبحر، فلا تظن على نفسك ولا تبخل على نفسك أكثر من القراءة في علوم اللغة العربية. This was quite technical. So if you get this. Do you hear it? Give me, give me one more playback, one more time, so I can catch it. No, nah, the audio, even the audio of this video is a little bit. Uh... There's a lot of echo. No. مهما استطعت أن تتبحر، فلا تظن على نفسك ولا تبخل على نفسك أكثر من القراءة في علوم اللغة العربية. ليس لا تبخل. نعم لا تظن ولا تبخل. أنا أشرح لك بالعربي don't be, don't be shy embarrassed, right? لا لا تبخل ليس لا لا تخجل لا تبخل أو تخجل أوكي أنا نعم don't be stingy now here مزمل he makes two verbs that are very close to each other one is خجلة the other one is بخيلة one means to be embarrassed the other one means to be stingy don't be stingy أيوة جميل don't be stingy so he said مهما 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 استطعت أن تتبحر في اللغة العربية يعني الذي أمكن لك ما دمت ما دمت يعني قادرا عليه فافعل يعني لا تبخل افعل أك أك يعني أكثر ما تستطيع من, من تعلم اللغة إذا استطعت أن تدرس كل الكتب فافعل يعني لا تتوقف لا تبخل Don't stop. Don't be stingy in how much you can start, you can learn every language. Keep on going and reach until you reach your limits. There's no limits. No, exactly. So, mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, yani, this was the, this was what I was uh, trying to show because what I'm trying to, I'm in the video. I'm talking about the the three stages that I always talk about in fluency. The first stage is where you don't know how to how to speak anything of. You just know like you just have scattered words. The second stage is where I, I showed in the video where you when you was at the second stage the third stage is right now you are your third stage of fluency in the arabic language which means that sometimes you won't be able to understand something based on how it's been phrased to you but if the person explains it to you in a different way in arabic you still understand you see what i'm trying to say so that's the third yeah. stage And this is the stage right before native fluency. This is the stage right before native fluency because you are able to sit in front of a teacher that's only teaching solely using Arabic. And you are still able to go back and forth with, with him saying, oh, I didn't understand this. Can you explain it again? Okay, I explained it to you again in Arabic and you understand it. So whether because you didn't understand The word he used in the beginning, whether you didn't hear what he said, whether whether his way of speaking, he is just not giving you the full picture. He's speaking with a lot of meth- metaphors and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, alhamdulillah, man. Uh, I'm so happy, so excited. Uh, yani, the whole week, this past whole week, our team was uh, like, we were all looking for for your past videos. Uh, oh, Sharon was in this too, huh? Yeah, and uh, and you know, and we found we we watched the video that you sent me on Instagram mm-hmm. in Arabic, and we were like, oh yeah, we gotta make we gotta make a a video, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, man, I, I ask Allah to put barakah in your studies. Uh, don't mm-hmm. think like now you just open the door, basically. You mm-hmm. know what I'm say? Now you just open mm-hmm. the door. You have the key. You put the key in. And you just open the door a little bit. Make sure you, as the Sheikh said, مَهْمَ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَنْ تَتَبَحَرْ فِي اللُّغَ الْعَرَبِيَةِ فَفْعَلْ
Mm -hmm. All you can do, just just do so. So until here, you guys have the progress of Brother Muzammil's Arabic journey. If you guys want to know about the method, go ahead and click the link down below, and you will find a 20-minute explanation of uh, the method. Oh, and to see the real ones who watch until the end, I want you guys to comment something very specific from zero to fluent in Arabic. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace and alaikum.